Commander of the 97th Battalion, 60th Separate Mechanized Brigade, call sign Rust, reported continuous Russian attempts to storm Ukrainian positions in the Lyman direction. He shared this on Espresso TV. For the past 11 months in the Lyman sector, the enemy hasn't stopped trying to storm us in small or large groups. Therefore, I cannot say this direction is quieter than any other. The enemy is constantly pressing, but the 60th Separate Mechanized Brigade stands firm, holding every position, Rust noted. He mentioned that powerful Russian assaults by mechanized units occurred this spring in the Lyman direction. Russian tanks and armored personnel carriers came in large numbers, but all were destroyed. Now the enemy approaches on foot or on ATVs, trying to get close to our positions. But buggies aren't armor, and they burn easily, Rust emphasized. The commander added that Ukraine's defense forces effectively use FPV systems, mortar, and artillery fire. In this phase of the war in 2024, armored vehicles are almost irrelevant. All enemy beforehand and 90% of the time is destroyed on approach. Tanks costing millions are destroyed by FPV drones that cost $300 and skilled pilots, Rust explained. Ivan Sekach, the spokesman for the 110th Separate Mechanized Brigade, stated that Russia is deploying all available resources in the Pokrovsk direction. The Pokrovsk sector remains one of the most challenging areas on the front line. Russia's objective is to capture the whole Donetsk region. They are trying to advance toward the road to Kramatorsk. The Russian army is heavily invested in this effort, conducting up to 40 to 50 assaults per day. Their main advantage is their large number of personnel. Currently, they are using less equipment, but recently reinforcements have arrived in the Pokrovsk direction, likely Russian airborne troops. These reinforcements bring infantry combat vehicles, Tigger armored vehicles and other new weapons previously unused, noted Sekach. According to him, Russian forces in the Donetsk region are being very cautious with their equipment because it is in very short supply. They are also running out of old equipment and need to repair it. Russian forces are now deploying their last resources and are trying to capture as much territory as possible to gain a better position for negotiations. The Russians are paying a heavy price for this. Many of their personnel are killed. However, they are going all in and will continue to create the most challenging situation possible until fall, emphasized Sekach. Over 25,000 people have been forced to evacuate amid wildfires in Canada's Jasper National Park in Canada, officials said on Tuesday. In a statement issued on Tuesday, the park said the town of Jasper and Jasper National Park in Alberta have closed and are being evacuated due to active wildfires. The evacuation impacts 15,000 people who were visiting and staying in the park when the order was issued, as well as about 10,000 people in the town of Jasper. The municipality of Jasper and Jasper National Park said in an updated emergency alert Tuesday morning the evacuation from the town site and the park is progressing well and people should continue to follow directives as the majority of traffic is being directed west on Highway 16. The wildfires causing evacuations are spread out throughout the eastern half of the province, including in the Caribou, Kamloops, Southeast and Prince George Fire Centers. Several of them have caused partial highway closures. Situated in the province of Alberta and about 370 kilometers west of the provincial capital city of Edmonton, Jasper National Park is popular among tourists and known for its campgrounds and extensive trail networks. In recent weeks, Alberta has been baking under scorching temperatures, forcing another 7,500 people out in a string of remote communities.